What's going on guys? My name is Luke. I make a wide variety of music ranging from indie, alt rock to neoclassical. And today I'm gonna to be breaking down how I made one of my favorite lo-fi tracks called Storybook. I knew I wanted something uh, sort of whimsical and fantastical, something reminiscent of a storybook, hoping to sort of tap into this nostalgia, dreamlike feeling. I sort of go for with a lot of the music under this artist called Moat. So right out of the gate, you can see that this is a, a pretty simple project file. There aren't a ton of instrument layers, a little bit of automation on some effects and volumes, but nothing too wild, which is sort of a staple of the style I go for as Moat, the sleepy lo-fi artist I released this track as. But I knew I was trying to capture this uh, whimsical sort of fairy tale like feeling. Um, and so I started things off messing around with the piano. I went to an old favorite, Bitfire Labs. Got this soft piano setting. It's this really warm, super gentle felt piano. I started things off just kind of messing around and found a melody I liked that sort of tried to capture that emotion. This is what I started with. So I was thinking a good way to expand on that atmosphere that I was going for with this fairy tale like pretty organic sound was to layer in some strings, which you can see here I've uh, automated the volume in so that it sort of grows through the intro. Here that is all together. So you can see I tried to cover a little bit more uh, sonic space with that and just give it a little bit of body. At this point, I'm pretty sure that's when I started just adding some Foley, some, some ambience. And I went with a couple of pieces from Mondo Loops. Yeah, Dreamy Lo-Fi Hip Hop Samples Volume 1. Uh, the free version, shout out to Mondo Loops for hooking it up with the free samples. Always very valuable for someone just looking to get started um, without trying to break the bank. Highly recommend that pack. All of his packs really are unbelievable. He's, he, he's an unbelievable artist. Um, and so the first one I added here is just this typing sound. It's, you know, fingers on a keyboard basically. I thought it might sort of ground us in the real world before being transported to, to this, this dream world I was trying to create. Um, and then paired with that, I've got this quiet stroll ambience. It's just a really quiet, um, sort of shuffling of the feet. So there's a nice high-end rumble, almost vinyl-like sound, some birds in the background, really just kind of putting this into a space that I think allows us to kind of transition to the feel I was going for. All together, we've got our strings, our, our typing, and then some volume automation. And you can feel that sort of transforms the the bare bones sound. It really kind of puts you in a position you're working late at night, you know, you're you're studying for the, the big exam coming up. And then hopefully we went to, to, to bring you to the dreamland, right? Leading into this this first drop, I brought in a little bit of bass and some percussion. For the bass, I went super simple, just kind of followed root notes, a couple little walk downs that fit with the melody on, uh, I believe this is the contact, oh no, so it's a serum preset I've got here. Uh, just something I slapped together. I put a Juno wave, which gives us a little bit of angularity. It's gonna put a little bite in that, that low end. I dropped that down one octave. And then a sine wave oscillator for oscillator B. Both of them being passed through this low pass filter, taking out the high end that I put in with the Juno, which softens it up, um, gives it a nice warm feeling. And we've got a little bit of a gradual attack, so it's not too punchy, because again, we're trying to make that, that soft sound. So it kind of just give me this warm, kind of quick but long delay. The sustain um, drops off and it holds at a lower level. So it's 
present, but not too in your face, hopefully. Uh, the effects are super simple. Um, so I just have a little bit of chorus uh, and another low pass filter mixed all the way up at this low 18 to again, get that, that high end out. So without that, you get a lot of those upper resonances. And so we're not making anything too muddy. We wanna make sure that that's not cutting through too much. So it gives us our bass tone there. And then on the effects chain, I once again, EQ'd out the highs and then a little bit of just compression on the, the limiter here. Leading into that with the bass, I've got another sample from Mondo Loops, uh, Dreamy Lo-Fi for just a little riser to kind of add the energy going in. This is what it sounded like with the bass coming in here. So it just fills out the, the low end a little bit more. And of course, in the, the first drop, that's where we're gonna have our percussion come in. I wanted this to be super simple, so it wasn't too energetic. So I just dropped a simple uh, kick on one. Here we are again with another Mondo Loop sample. Um, and I believe this is the, the snare uh, from his pack as well. But yeah, I don't have too much effects wise on either of them. Um, but I did do a little side chaining with the kick and the bass just to help that cut through a little bit more. So we lead into this drop with the riser, and hit the bass with the strings and the keys. So at this point, it was really starting to come together. Um, I think the, the perk loop helps give it some motion without being too in your face. It's got this like nice woody sound, uh, really organic, really kind of natural. And then I knew I wanted some guitar and I'm not much of a guitar player if I'm being honest, but uh, I tried my best to make it work. So one of the tricks I'll do just to help me with, with timing and being a little bit more confident is I'll drop down a scratch track, which you can see right now is not routed to the mixer uh, because I just laid down the chords I knew I wanted the guitar to play with, but I didn't want to muddy up the middle. Um, so I ended up cutting this out of the final mix. Just the strums and the chords to give me timing so that I could record some lead part that would be sort of dancing back and forth throughout the track. Once I had the scratch, um, pluck away at these things here. So in there you could hear how like the the guitar chords were sort of fighting with the the lead melodies I was playing with. So that's sort of why I ultimately decided to keep that out of the track. Um, some people might think it would add a little bit more body, but you want to be careful uh, adding too many layers when you're looking for a good, clear, clean mix. Um, so sort of all together, this is what we had for that first drop coming in from uh, the intro. So here in that first four bars, I already added in a new hi-hat loop. So it just helps give it the, the energy growing, something changing, something adding in. Roughly every four bars, I, I find that to be a pretty good key for keeping a, a track interesting, especially when it's mellow like this. You don't want to get too stale too quickly. So the hi-hat loop came in. Uh, the lead guitar gets a little bit more interesting as we hit the second half of the first uh, loop. And then in the next run through the same chord progression, the same piano and string part, I actually bring in a new guitar riff, which I think really sort of brings the track together and locks it into that uh, fantastical space I was sh sort of shooting for. So that riff, uh, I've got a lower and a higher part panned left and right. It just sort of gives it a little bit of a new energy. <laughs> So 
So in the uh, bridge section, I guess you could call it, I pulled out a trick that I was a big fan of at the time that I was making this track where I automated this filter in on, I believe, the keys and just sort of closed down the frequencies, almost telephone-like, but it's still not quite a, a telephone filter. And then I closed the stereo separation on everything so that now everything sort of moved to the middle so what was panned out just sounds like it's right up the center. It sort of sucks the track in. And combined with that, I added this plucking along part with the guitar. So I just followed the chords and then sort of gave it uh, another new added rhythm as we grew out of the bridge into the second drop. So yeah, the, I guess one final note here is I've got this, this riser coming into that second drop. Again, helps build the energy into that. And then another really useful trick if you're ever trying to make your drops a little bit more dramatic to create more contrast, uh, a great way to do that is to create negative space before the, the big moment. Because had this guitar and the bass just continued all the way through, there wouldn't be that contrast that you hear where right at the end of the bridge, things get sort of a bit smaller. And, and we do that also with the stereo separation coming back to, to fully panned uh, left and right. So you can hear that as it is. And then if we had continued the bass part and continued this, this plucking pattern, you notice there's just a little bit less contrast. It gives you a little bit less energy out of it. So really, negative space is what can end up making your drop bigger rather than trying to add more in the, the drop section and give it more layers and more impacts. Just pulling something out of the section before can be a really good way to, to simplify without losing the, the impact you're looking for. Um, and yeah, you know, I just did the, the one more run through just as not to get too uh, repetitive. And I just sort of let it ring out, let the, the typing come back in to bring us back to the place we started. Uh, and I had the ambience fade out as the, the reverb tails went off on the, the lead guitars and a little bit in the, the strings and piano. So yeah, quick video today, but uh, I just thought I'd do a little breakdown, talk through sort of how I did it, what the production looked like a little bit, and, and what it took for me to make a track that as of this recording I think just broke 30,000 streams on Spotify. It is available everywhere you like to listen to music as is all of my music. I think I'll leave a link in the description to all of the different artists that I release music as. Um, but this one here is Storybook by Moat. A uh, big shout out to Cuddly Weeks. It's the label I released it through. They've done a, a ton to help me out to push it out to playlists and give it a little bit of love. If you guys like the track and you want to hear more, if there's any more you'd like me to dive into, leave a comment. Um, let me know if you want more videos like this in the future. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all I've got. So we'll see you next time.